Now, I love white dawn dick. I really enjoy white dawn dick. It's the chess match of it. But it's September 7th, and it's my first day out looking for mule deer. And I feel like it's the first day of hunting season all over again. I'm dumping all my white tail stuff out of my backpack, uh, loading up some Gatorade and the spotting scope, and gonna go see if we can find ourselves a mule deer. So just to give you a quick rundown of my mule deer setup, try to go light as possible, obviously. Bows, arrows, running the Matthews with the Quivalizer. Got my camera. I actually have a, I'm gonna keep my thermocell on me because the mosquitoes seem pretty bad. Binocular and range finders, TP, couple snacks, lots of Gatorade. Spotter, tripod. That's it. One of the things that I started using a couple years ago and has proved invaluable is having a little foam pad with me. So when I'm glassing like this, um, I'm almost always in cactus country. And uh, this just makes it a little bit more comfortable and uh, lets you Spend that time maybe a little bit more picking apart the, the long hours of glassing. I feel like a socked in sheep hunter here. Just had a pretty heavy fog roll in, but it actually should work out good because it allowed me to crest the top and get up in these bushes here and so now when it lifts I'm hoping that I'm gonna find something So this is my first time hunting this particular spot on this property here. And I came out scouting with Dan earlier this year. And we found two bucks that are about the exact same size. And one has an extra on his left side and one has an extra on his right side. So naturally we named the one Lefty and the other one Clifford. So. Claire is bedded up here in just a beautiful little spot, but I'm not sure how old he is. He's a good buck, don't get me wrong. Um, he's probably 165 inch deer, 
score is not the issue, but he's got a little extra. And boy, if he's a two or three year old deer, then he's got a ton of potential. So I'm gonna try to slip up here to within a hundred yards or so and try to nail down how how old he is and how big he is and and if I can stalk him or if I want to stalk him. So Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Vortex Optics, Wood Wheaton Super Center, Covert Scouting Cameras, Old Smokes Coffee, Black Widow Innovations, and the MD of Bonneville. This segment of the show is brought to you by Deluxe Wall Tents, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. Jeffrey Solberg was attempting to do the impossible on an early September morning. He watched a beautiful muley buck bed down in a perfect location. He was by himself without a cameraman that morning, but that didn't stop him from telling the story. That's a quick mule deer season. I wasn't sure if I was gonna shoot that deer or not, but that stock was so awesome. It was so perfect. Self-filmed when he got up. He's got nice deep forks, little sticker, big mature body. Beautiful deer. <laughs> oh, here's my belt. It was making a creaking noise as my belt often does these days. <laughs> that couldn't have been more perfect. I got to the little bush I was planning on waiting at and 
I had just got there and he stood up. <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. Ranged him 35 yards and dialed the pin, flipped the fixed pins out of the way. The arrow should be buried. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, blew right through him. There's his bed. <laughs> oh, he's bigger than I thought. Wow. Boy, they don't go far when you hit them there, do they? Oh, man. What a great deer. What a great hunt. This buck shed his velvet this morning. I saw him I saw him fully velvet right at sunrise and a little bit later I filmed him through the spawning scope completely red and now his antlers are they're already staining like but they're white at the bottom that's pretty cool <laughs> oh, this hunt could not have gone any better really I mean it was meant to be what a cool deer Look at that. Oh, I am so happy with this buck, with this hunt, with how this went out, went down. I mean, everything came together. I was able to set the camera up 80 yards away, sneak in another 50 yards. Right when I got to my sage bush, at 35 yards, he stands up and turns around gives me a slightly quartering away shot at 35 yards. I mean, it, you, you couldn't have written the script any better. What a cool, cool deer. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Mad Ramps, Deluxe Wall Tents, Victory Archery, Top Notch Taxidermy Studio, Federal Premium Ammunition, High Mountain Seasoning, Eye Hunter, and Arkin RV. This segment of the show is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. While Jeffrey Solberg was packing his mealy buck out of the coolies after a miraculous self-filmed adventure, Darcy and myself were also scouring the prairie searching for a buck that piqued her interest. Darcy was rolling on a three-year streak of archery mealy bucks and hoping to extend it to four. Consistently harvesting a mature buck with a bow in Alberta is one of the toughest accomplishments you can achieve. But over the course of the past three years, Darcy has executed almost perfectly and I had faith that given the opportunity again this fall, she would do the same. We had spent the entire first week of the season chasing a giant old buck around, but he had always managed to give us the slip before we could even get close. We invested a ton of time into him with absolutely nothing to show for it. When we returned to mule deer country in the middle of October, he had vanished and we found ourselves looking for different deer in new places. The weather had dumped snow on us the first day in and most of the bucks were bedded out in the sun, making it impossible to make a play. A few days in, I found a gorgeous buck bedded in a tough spot out in the open. The odds were against us, but you never know until you try. It's cold out here, but I'm hot. It sucks to dress in this weather. The wind's cold, the temperature's cold, and there's snow on the ground while we're trying to mule deer hunt, which isn't a really good combination. But the snowstorm blew in two days ago, and we're here all week, so we got no choice but to go at them. We found a few bucks bedded this morning. One's just over the hill here. This morning, Dana saw him, and he was bedded in a really, really not the best spot, kind of in the middle of the field, because they do stupid things when it's cold and snowy. But never know, he might have moved, or we're going to come at him from a different direction and see might look different from the different direction. So go try, but man, I am hot.
We found him again. He's just down the hill, so we're gonna try to go stalk at him. It's snow though, so we can't really take off our boots. But it's also like pretty windy, so I think we'll be able to sneak in pretty good. There's another buck with him too. He's decent, but he's the other one's for sure bigger. And they're both bedded away from us, so that's to our benefit, I guess. Kind of sneak in the ridge. And as soon as we get a little bit lower than them, or a little bit lower than this, they shouldn't be able to see us, so we should be able to make a lot of miles closer to them without them seeing us like that. So hopefully that works. But the problem is, as soon as you go down, the landscape usually changes, so we'll see what it looks like down there. Depends what's in this bottom, too. Yeah, we gotta be careful to not spook some of these deer because there was more deer than just them. We can't see nothing in these trees. They're still there, but I don't know how we're gonna get close to them. I bet it right up on top, there's two of them. The wind's really good though. There's lots of noise. The ice is falling off the trees, so it co it'll cover up our noise. Because we got so many clothes on. We're gonna have to belly crawl. Otherwise, they're gonna see us. This was one of the toughest stalks that I had ever been on. The weather conditions were treacherous, and these bucks were bedded in a horrible spot. We had managed to belly crawl to within 40 yards before we ran out of cover and we were forced to set up and wait. If I peeked through the sagebrush, I could see the buck's entire face looking directly towards us. I couldn't hold my head up the entire time to watch, so I had elected to hide and peek up every few minutes to watch. After doing this for over an hour, I poked my head up and they were gone. I started to panic before seeing them feeding over to our left. I grabbed a quick range for Darcy and she did the rest. Did I get him? I got him, Dana. I shot him good. I shot him good. The arrow was really good in him. It's him, it's him. He's running. He's going down. He's, it's a good shot. He's not going to... He can't run far. I just shot it here at 53 yards. I drilled him. I wasn't sure at first, but I had time there. The other one that was to the left of him was looking right at me, but he wasn't really. <sighs> Dana, I just got four mule deer in a row. Four years in a row, four mule deer with my bow. <sighs> I'm just shaking. <laughs> this segment of the show is brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. We only, that was the thing, is we only thought there was two deer here, but there was actually three. There one, could have been one bedded further back or something too. Or even just right here. He must have been further back then. All this snow is just from two days ago, hey? Or he thinks... Oh yeah, the snow is just yesterday. He has really good forks. I can't believe I did it again. This is a gorgeous deer. Beautiful forks, look at him. 
Like to be honest, I didn't really have high hopes on this stock because it wasn't the best day. I mean, it was, we're wearing rain gear because it was really cold this morning because it snowed yesterday. So, I mean, we couldn't be crawling in our base there we would have been soaked and frozen. Um, and the wind started swirling. Like the place we were stalking was not the best place at all. We were literally on the top of the hill, right in view of him. Like we, Dana could see his whole head the whole time. I just kept my head down and was just hoping for the best. And then we actually didn't even see them get up. And Dana looked and they had walked probably 50 yards from where they were sitting. So, which, which he actually walked further away which made it an over 50 yard shot, but but it worked out fine. Oh, we're done and we still have light. We gotta pack this not too far, probably about five, 600 yards. And then we're gonna walk back to the truck, which is probably a good kilometer away um, without the bags. And then we can, we can drive the truck to where we drop the meat off. So we got full load. I got one back quarter in the head and Dana's got the rest of the deer so we got her all plus our gear it's not too bad my backpack's not bad Dana's is probably a little heavier oh, yeah, I feel 